Okay, these are solutions to homework set number eight. The first problem looks at trying to build a stopwatch accurate to 0.1 millisecond. Here the trick is first set up timer two for 1,000 clocks. Uh, 1,000 times 10 million clocks per second gives you 100 microseconds, 0.1 millisecond. One way to do that is A is 1, B is 250, C is 4. Uh, to do that, T2 con sets up A and C. This field is A, 0 means 1. For C, 1 means 4. So the bit pattern, first 4 bits is 0, last 4 bits are 5. Hex is 0, 5 means A is 1, C is 4. PR2 is 249, meaning 250. So the setup for timer 2 is as follows. Set up the timing for 1,000 clocks. Enable, 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 really enable. The interrupt service routine then is just going to look at port B. If I have a global variable called run, if run equals 1, I'll increment time. I'll check RB. RB0 turns off the stopwatch. RB1 turns it on. RB2 clears the time. And the main routine just displays time. What that looks like is this. So here if I hit RB1, that starts the stopwatch. RB0 stops it. Start. Clear. To check the time, to check the time, I've got a cute little app called Tune Pitchfork. If I go to RB, RA0, that's 5 kilohertz. It's out of range for the tuner. RB1 is divided by 2, 2500 hertz. This is divided by 4. 50 divided by 8, 625. So there we have a stopwatch. And as a sidekick, cats find 5 kilohertz very, very interesting. It must sound like mouse squeaks or something. So that's the first problem. Uh, second problem is to turn your pick into a one key piano. Here I'd like to play the note 146.83 Hz every time I hit RB0. To do that, what I do is set up N for 34,052 clocks. That's A times B times C. Uh, the trick is trying to find A, B, and C to be roughly 34,052. Under the constraints that A is 1 through 16, C is 1, 4, or 16, B is 1 through 256. Uh, one way to do that is max out B, find A and C. Now round up A. When I round up A, B has to get smaller. So B goes from 256 to 212.8. I can't do 212.8, so round up 213. So the setup would be as follows. Uh, T2 con is 4F. That means A is 1001, 9 meaning 10. 1, 1 for C means 16. And PR2 is 212, meaning 213. If I then check that program, when I hit RB0, it's playing 146.8 Hz. That's a one-key piano. Finally, the last problems on the homework are to come up with a device using timer 2 interrupts. Now, an example here is a three-key piano. Um, as a sidelight, if you find programs on Bison Academy, you're more than welcome to use them. It's much easier modifying existing programs than starting from scratch. However, if you use a program for Bison Academy, modify it. Change it around a little bit, um, add more keys, change the pitch, change the frequency, do something different than just the online notes. Um, again, the online sample programs are a starting point. That shouldn't be your final uh, demonstration for your homework. Here's an example of what you could do. It follows the lecture notes. Let's build a three-key piano. I want to play notes A4, B4, and C5. I want to hit buttons RB0, 1, and 2. And the tolerance is plus minus 10 hertz. Tolerance is important. That kind of dictates how you build the piano. Um, also lets you check at the end, do I meet the requirements? For analysis, the number of clocks between interrupts is based upon frequency. That's 10 million divided by 2 divided by hertz. 
So for the different notes, I want to have 11,000, 10,000, 9,000 clocks between interrupts. One way to do that is to set, a, set up A, B, and C in this fashion. The code then is if I hit the button on port B, I'll toggle port A pin 1. Um, let's see. These are PR2s for the different notes. And then the main routine just says whatever button I pushed, uh, that tells me what PR2 is. If I change the conditions of the interrupt, that changes the frequency that the interrupt runs at. Um, that'll change how the note is being played. To demonstrate that, I can take this uh, sound generator, which has the three different notes. 440 hertz, 494, 523. So there I have a three note piano. For statistical analysis, it depends upon what question you're trying to answer. Uh, for example, if I want to find out how accurate are the notes, I can take the data, take the actual measurements, take the difference, that's the error in hertz. I can now do statistics. Given the error, find the mean, find the standard deviation. The sample size is 3. From StatTrek, I can find the t-score for probability of 0.05 with 2 degrees of freedom. That becomes 2.92. What that means is, based upon my data, using timer 2 interrupts, I should be able to generate frequencies which are within plus minus 1 hertz. Uh, within my requirements of 10 hertz. That would be homework set number 8.